What is up, Buckeye Nation? Buckeye Nation. I have a special treat for you today. I'm Floco, Ohio State Football with Scarlet and Great, right here on YouTube. But we got a special guest, special treat in the house. My good buddy, Jay Stevens of the Jay Stevens Podcast and Locked On Buckeyes. Normally, he's the host, and he is the host with the most. He does a great job. I've been on his show several times. I've always enjoyed myself. He does an awesome job. But today, Jay gets to speak his mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing host today. It's all the Jay. It's all about Jay. Jay, how you doing, my friend? Corey, I'm doing well. A lot better than Wolverine fans. Let's get that out there really quickly. <laughs> uh, you guys, you guys keep talking about Ohio State this, Ohio State that. We own you. Oh man, this show is going to maybe prove that. <laughs> maybe you don't own the Buckeyes like you think. No, Corey, I'm doing well. Had to you get own that shot something out there. of the Buckeyes. You own some of their property. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm going to get that out there quickly. If there's Wolverine fans, stick around. I'll say some things you might like, you might dislike, probably dislike, but we'll have a good old time. Man. It's going to be fun not being the host. Um, I I compare it to you're always in charge. You have mm -hmm. a script. And in your script, in my script, there are three different segments, three different topics. But then there are other little things that have to be and thrown in there reads. that have to be put in at a certain time. I don't have that today. Now, we're constrained by time. I won't keep you here all night, Corey, but I might go on a little tangent. It's a little bit longer than normal. I know you understand, but this is kind of how I feel. Like, the reins are off. I can just walk through, respond to comments, and move forward. Hey, Jay, this this is our channel, baby. Just go. I have love at it. it, man. I love it. Have at it. I ain't, I ain't editing you, any, a word you say. <laughs> just have at it, my friend. Jay, let's get into it. We're talking Michigan scandal today. And yes, it is a scandal, folks. I don't care. Any Michigan fan watching this going, no, I don't, dude. Look, I, it's a scandal. Jay, let's get one thing real quick out of the way. For those Michigan fans who think it's just about sign stealing, what do you have to say to them? It's cheating. <laughs> I don't care if it's sign stealing or not. It's cheating. It's against the rules. And... I understand. I say it all the time, Corey. You understand this. In sports, you try to find a way to get a competitive advantage. But you have to do so within the rule book. If you try to find a way to get a competitive advantage and it's outside of the rule book and you know it's out, well, even if you don't know, if it's outside of the rule book and you get caught, you're going to get in trouble. So, yes, this is a scandal. It's bad. I will describe it in other ways later on with what's going on and how I view this very scandal right now with what's going on in Ann Arbor. Yes, this does ratchet up the intensity and some of the smack talk that's going to happen November 25th. I'm here for it. I love that part of the rivalry. This is it's cheating. This is cheating. Sign stealing is cheating in the way that they're doing it. Now, if I'm in on the other side of the line and I, for some odd reason I got a way to look at the other side of the line, it's still your signs that way. Okay, that's one thing. But the way that Michigan went about doing this and stealing signs of other teams. And, Corey, I don't want to mention the Givler tweet. I don't know if you saw what he tweeted recently. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah. yeah, not just Big Ten teams, potentially CFP teams, teams you're going to play in the playoff. Whoo, Michigan was thinking ahead in this one. It's abnormal, but they got caught cheating. <laughs> oh, man, I love it. Yeah, you know, it's funny. I'm going to say it right now. Just to just get this part out of the way. I'm going to officially apologize on this show for ever saying a negative word about C.J. Stroud. Bro, you got cheated. For anybody everybody who ripped on him for losing to Michigan, they had to cheat to beat C.J. Stroud. He is the OSU GOAT. You can't, there's no stat to compare with that. <laughs> they literally cheated to beat him. Um, look, the, I'm just real quick, and I'm going to get back to Jay here right now, but... What we're saying is buying tickets at opposing teams' games uh, while your game is going on just to get film of the sideline to see the signs, that is the illegal part. It's not – you're right, Jay. When I'm watching, you know, you know there was, across the sidelines, like, wait a minute, I think that's what that means. That's not That's not the problem here. No. Um, it's the fact that you – and then I, 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 it's the fact that you openly paid – I mean, like, allegedly paid somebody to do it. So, Jay, what do you buy – do you buy the argument – that Michigan is saying, oh, I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know he was doing this. Part of me would like to think that that is actually true. But then Buckeye writer, reporter, photographer Tom Moore went back into his archives. Yeah. And I believe Tom's with 
Buckeye Huddle now. So I believe he's with them, and they do mm-hmm. great work over there. Don't get me wrong. I really appreciate all the work that they do covering Ohio State football. Went back into the archives and start pulling up pictures. And then saw Adam King, a news anchor, sports anchor in Columbus. I don't know exactly mm-hmm. what TV station he works for. Got a video. And there is so much evidence right now that's kind of refuting anything anybody to, could say that, oh, this didn't happen. Corey, the I don't know if you saw the picture. There was a picture I did. I did. Um, I did. zooming in and the lamination, the, the page, page that was laminated that had a person that looked like they were doing movements. Mm-hmm. That's not normal paperwork on a sideline. Now, I, I also realized I'm not on a sideline. I don't know what's on there, piece of paper. But generally when they show those on TV or if you see a picture of one, uh, somebody's play sheet, it's plays. It's words. I've never seen anything with a figure, a person that is animating different signs. Never seen that. This is weird, man. This is really, really weird. I never thought, which I should have thought in 2023, somebody would be going to these extreme measures to – find a way to get a competitive advantage above the opposition, knowing that they're breaking the rules. It's weird. It's really, really odd. And maybe, I mean, you mentioned CJ Stroud, how he went 0-2 against Michigan when he was the starting quarterback. Uh, It was not a good mark on his career. I mean, if you look at Stroud and how he threw the football and how he led the Buckeyes, if you, even with the Oregon, if you take away that Oregon loss and it was just Georgia, his career is looked at a completely different, mm-hmm. and he actually had a chance to win the Natty in 2021. But yeah, I mean, this is weird. This is really, really odd. Um, but I would, I wish we could have those games back. I really do. I we might. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're might, right. They might have to vacate them. This is one of those things that when I look, think about football and think about Stroud specifically, I didn't think this was going to come up. I have a great appreciation for C.J. Stroud now than I did mm-hmm. when he played. I was an analyst. A fan, yes, but primarily an analyst watching Stroud, having to to dissect everything, like we're trying to dissect this abnormal cheating scandal. In the moment, I was like, "Oh, dude, what are you doing? Not not passionate? Not no? I think I was wrong. CJ is passionate. CJ is a good football player, and I, you give me, I, I will take Stroud. Um, you give me Haskins. You give me F- Fields. I think Stroud is going to be competing to be the best out of all of them if he had." Those two games against the Wolverines, his career is looked at way different than it currently is. Well, he goes to two Big Ten title games and yeah. uh, probably wins them. Yeah, because it's it's the West and they're terrible. But uh, look, I, there's people trying to argue they didn't know anything about it. The guy has a laminate sheet on the sideline. I mean, c- come on, what? what how, it, you tell me the program doesn't know about it when he has a laminate sheet on the program. I don't Not think to- support staff members are normally that close to the coordinators or even head coach exactly. on the sidelines. I don't even really think – I know he has a some, headset. <laughs> that's not normal. That's not normal behavior. The support staff members I see at Ohio State that are on the sideline, they don't have headsets. And they're doing different things that aren't, hey, hey uh, they do this. I saw – there was a time – I that video that came out, Stroud is under center, looks up, looks at the sideline, mm-hmm. and Stallions is focused – on the opposition, on Ohio State's coaches, as soon as they send the signal in, he tells – They start pointing up. Yeah, they all start pointing they up. They all yeah. start pointing up, and he is a leader telling everybody, mm. hey, this is what's going on. You you can't refute what's going on. You Now, the thing is, how much more ev- evidence is there? And how long has this been going on? We have for like, sure that it's, it's uh, what, 30 teams he was going to go to games to – Forty. Um, it's up. It's up where the forty-five, from what I understand. Or forty-five eight, that's, games. That's, that's the number that might. That might the new number that might be coming out. Forty-five. Yeah. Do you realize how much money this man was spending on college? Well, it, it was all games? him. He just. He's just rich, I guess. <laughs> and he was doing it for his own personal collection. It wasn't for Jimmy at all. So. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't for. Hardball. If you can prove no. that money was funneled to him to do this from Michigan, oh, they are cooked. Completely cooked. That program. They claim there's a paper trail, Corey. I don't know what's what's your what you can maybe find. Venmo, maybe Venmo. They finding some stuff on Venmo. But that that being said, uh, yeah, if they find it on Venmo, Venmo, what do you do if you're the president, university president, of Michigan? You kind of have to fire Jim Harbaugh for this, right? I mean, NCAA is going to hammer you for this. 
I don't see how Harbaugh keeps his job. I, I don't. I mean, Trestle was forced out for nothing near as severe. Not as even this. in the ballpark. <laughs> Herm Edwards was fired for nothing as severe as this. Remember now, Michigan's already under investigation for recruiting violations during COVID. The same thing that Herm Edwards did at Arizona State. And Herm Edwards was fired by Arizona State for those recruiting violations that he did mm -hmm. during the during that dead period during COVID, 2020, maybe 2021. But they broke rules. Harbaugh did the same thing. So now you have recruiting violations, which the NCAA says, no, that's against the rules. And then all of a sudden you add in, you're stealing signs, you're sending somebody to a game, doing things that are illegal, in-person scouting, and it's going 45 games, 11 Big Ten schools. Clemson's now in the mix. Was it Georgia as well? Uh, or are we looking at Iowa? Are you mm -hmm. looking at other schools that Michigan played? Is this prior to the 2020 season? Is that why they were so bad in 2020? Because, because they were trying to work through the kinks? I'm just throwing different ideas out there because this is real. This is real stuff here. I don't know how he keeps his job. And realistically, if college football really, if, if the NCAA wants to make an example out of Jim Harbaugh, ban him. Can't coach again. Not just FBS. No level of football that's under the umbrella of the NCAA. Now, yes, I understand college football at the FBS level is not a sponsored sport by the NCAA, but the NCAA still can punish and lay that bring down the hammer on people and punishments. I, dude, I don't know, man. I, I, I don't see how he coaches again in college football. Go to the NFL, make your money, and do those things there. But in the NFL, they won't tolerate this either. So I don't know. I don't know what the next move is for Harbaugh. He's not hurting financially for money, but no. you want to do what you love. But, but his legacy would be shot. You know? Oh, dude. Oh, dude. Imagine, Corey, this is here where I'm going to start running my mouth about Michigan fans. I'm Go ahead. Have at it, brother. I'm not going to apologize for what I'm saying. Nope, I'm not going to edit any of it. Go ahead. Imagine how funny it would be. The two years they beat Ohio State, they go to the Big Ten Championship, ultimately win both of them. NCAA says, nope, you cheated. You guys are getting those trophies removed. Will's wins are going to be vacated. Dude, people, Ohio State fans will say, look, y'all cheated. <laughs> we didn't have a shot to even get there even though we deserve to be there based off how things went in the standings, man, I'll, I'll be upset, a little annoyed by it, but also be laughing like, you guys couldn't get there by just playing regular ball, by recruiting, by getting the best guys in the country and getting the coaches to come to Ann Arbor to actually coach your guys up. You guys had to cheat to get there. Ooh, I don't normally go on, on X, formerly known as Twitter, mm -hmm. and getting back and forth different conversations with fans that are Michigan fans. I talked to some Michigan fans. I'm cool with them. We have a healthy conversation about the rivalry. But, man, it's going to – Twitter, X, whatever it's called now, might go wild if all of a sudden the NCAA brings down the punishment, the hammer, and says, oh, those Big Ten championship games you guys won? No, those trophies are going away. Woo! <laughs> There's a price to pay for cheating. Who do you give them to in that situation? Do you give them to the second runner up, the runner up, the the uh, the West team that played them? Because I'm like, look, we all know Ohio State would have beat those teams. Uh, so what what do you do with that? Is my question. I mean, I guess you just kind of have to give it to Purdue and Iowa, right? I would think so, but think about Reggie Bush. There's nobody that has the Heisman from that That's season when he, it was vacated, and that was that once again. That's something that at the NCAA took away that they didn't hand out. Same thing with the Big Ten championship game. If they take away the trophy, they didn't hand it out. So I don't know if the Big Ten would come back and say the winner of the championship game in this year is now Iowa and Purdue because you guys were the leaders of the Big Ten West and played a team in Michigan that cheated and should not have been eligible to play in that game. That's realistically what could happen. But then again, once again, if you're an Ohio State fan, we got cheated. We are put into a situation where we should have been there. We should have won. Ohio State in 2021 and 2022, they were way better than Iowa and Purdue. Yeah, so, of course. Buckeye fans would be upset. And ultimately, Corey, this might be what Ohio State needs offensively to kind of get an extra boost under them. 
I know this was not the, the topic you texted me about saying analyze Buckeye football. This run game is bad. Mm. The offense is a little uh, inconsistent. Not a little. Mm. It's inconsistent. Maybe this is what they need. The added fuel to the fire. To say, oh, we need to prove to everybody in the country, especially to the people in Ann Arbor, that we don't have to cheat to win, to play good ball. They need something, man. Because right now, I don't know. You play you play uh, Purdue. Okay, 41 points. It should have been 60 plus. Um, 63 against Western Kentucky, but you only scored 23 against Indiana, 35 against Youngstown State. Like, so inconsistent. Mm. Maybe this is what they need to add fuel to their fire to say, hey, things are looking bad in Ann Arbor. Let's show the entire country we don't need to cheat to beat everybody on our schedule. Yeah, I think if uh, Michigan is no longer allowed to collect signs, it'd be very interesting to see how that game goes this this year. Um, I, let's let's talk about let's let's say allegedly they're they're absolutely guilty, right? I think they are, but we'll you know who knows what will yeah. come out. Who knows what tomorrow will bring? I think the evidence is pretty clear. But um, that being said, I mean, I'm I'm what I'm scared of is they're going to be like, yep, NCAA comes back. Yeah, Harbaugh didn't know. Like, really, you know, we're going to have to buy that and swallow that bill. But anyway. Think about for the second the kids. I, I mean, look. I know some players did know. Obviously, in the Michigan, they, when you see them doing doing this with their uh, with, with with stallion there, but there's got to be players who just think, man, we're just really good. The coaches really know what to do. What do you think about this, those players from the past who who would have to give up the Big Ten? T- I mean, look, look. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to hear cry crocodile tears, but. Uh, what do you think if you're a parent of a kid who's just like he just won the Big Ten twice because he went to Michigan, and then he finds out wow the coach was just cheating? I mean, there's been other scandals in NCAA history, obviously, that where parents had to deal with this kind of thing. But what, as a, Jay, what would you think those parents would be thinking? They sent their kid to the wrong school, or simple maybe. I, okay, I also realize there are some parents that are comfortable with cheating and saying, "Well, it's what they did. You got the trophy." So be it, regardless. Like, even if he did it in a, in an illegal way, it's cool. Didn't get caught in the moment. You got that trophy. You got that ring. So be it. So I understand both sides of it. But I think a lot of parents out there, Corey, would be upset because Harbaugh's recruiting. Harbaugh's mm-hmm. going into these homes. Harbaugh is winning over not maybe not both sets of parents, but is winning over moms and dads all over the country, maybe even around the world. I don't know how much they recruit internationally, but I guarantee they have some international players on their team. On the team, and you're going to go in these rooms and say, "Oh, I'm going to coach up your young man, teach him how to play ball, do X, Y, and Z." Then all of a sudden, maybe a mom or a dad ask Harbaugh, or maybe a coordinator or a position coach. Are you guys going to cheat my boy? Are, are you going to cheat him in how you develop him? Probably they're going to respond and say no. But then that same mom or dad that asked that question, this is all hypothetical. I don't know if it actually happened. To ask that question. Ultimately, they're just like, they lied to me. That man, those coaches came to my home. I made them food. We had a nice dinner. We talked. We laughed. Um, we talked about my son's Slept future. over in some sudden, cases. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I heard about that recently. Till it's like, man, this is, this guy's been weird. Um, <laughs> yeah. But all of a sudden, it's like, yeah, they didn't tell the truth. The one thing that's odd, we talk about like the players that were there that played, whose parents might have to be having conversations with their son, saying, "Boy, what did you know?" Think about those recruits, Corey, that are planning to sign a national letter of intent to play football at Michigan next year. We're about to get into flip season, as I call it, where guys that are nearing signing their um, basically contract to play football at a particular school in the upcoming season. Some of these guys that are Michigan commits could ultimately say, well, no, I'm going to decommit and go somewhere else. Why? They're not real people or they're real, but they just they cheat and try to get by that way. So many weird and abnormal angles to what's going on. I honestly this is a human in me, Corey. I know there's a rivalry involved, but I'm still a human here. I feel bad for the parents. I, I really do. Because I don't know what the conversations that they've had inside those homes, but I bet some of them ask, don't mess up my boy, T- teaching the right Ray. 
and the right way, meaning what mama and daddy taught him when he was a youngster, teach him how to be a man, teach him what's right. All of these things, not just lessons on the field, but also off the next thing you know, they're caught cheating. Um, it's this, the human part of me feels bad for the kids. Also, the human part of me doesn't feel bad for the adults in the room because they should know better. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest with you, and I think you brought up a good point when you said there's probably some parents in there like, I don't care. You know? um, it's, it's unfortunate because it's just you got to get any advantage you can. I mean, this is yeah. uh, look, we, 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 some of these parents went through it in recruiting that, look, I can get you this money. I can get you that money. I can get you this. I can get you, you your boy deserves this. And Oh, Corey, um, you, brought, you just brought up something else. Think about if they if the NCAA investigates and they have some way to prove that Harbaugh is paying recruits to commit to the school or somebody that's on the football staff is finding a way to uh, not via and I mean, even if it's via NIL is illegal, but we know what's happening. But it's finding a way to funnel money, say, oh, I got 50 grand, 100 grand, a half a million for you to come to this school over the next two years. Dude, if they find this stuff out. I don't know how long a punishment they should get the uh, department. I think if Har- I think mm. if the more evidence that comes out, I think Harbaugh is gone and the NCAA should consider banning him from co- from coaching in the sport in college football ever again in his life. Like it's that bad. But if this more stuff that comes allegation. out, what's that? I, mean, I think this allegation enough is to say you, you might want to think about him not coaching again. Cause that's just, this is egregious cheating. I mean, it just, it, I mean, look, I love the fact that all multiple Big Ten coaches are getting upset about it. I love the fact that we saw uh, J- Greg Schiano's inter- interview at halftime and it makes sense now. Yes. Uh, James Franklin just made a comment about it. Is this like, it doesn't make sense that they're in cover two when we're in fourth and one and we, we got a, a heavy set lineup and they're, they're, they're playing cover two defense. Like they know we're going to try to take a shot. You know, uh, I don't know where it's an unpredictable call. They just know it. It doesn't make any sense. Um, it's just, I mean, it's. I think it's been a. Un, it, it seems to be a, an open secret among Big Ten coaches that they've been doing this, and I just nobody wants to narc. You know what I'm saying? Nobody wants to, you know, tell. I mean, it looks like sour grapes. It looks. If you can't prove it, you look stupid. Yeah. Um, so I, I just, I'm glad that I think it looks like the rest of the Big Ten. Brian Day didn't want to comment on it. I think that's a smart move for him. Uh, but there it looks like the rest of the Big Ten kind of not so subtly now is saying like, yeah, we're tired of this crap. You know, if you're going to beat us, beat us on the field. Um, Kevin Noon just shared a photo of the all 22 uh, game film that teams get. And there's no way you see signs on those, on those, on on that film. And Buckeye huddle, I think it was just uh, put out a report saying that Ohio state has kind of confirmed that the, the, the signals on that laminate were in fact, Ohio state signals. They said, we'll just change up the signals. The problem is you're, you're seeing all the changes and all the different signals throughout the year. They can't just change them up in the middle of the game, you know, and then all of a sudden we let's get new language throughout in the middle of the game or even that week, to be honest, let's get new language throughout all the signal. That's a lot to put on kids who are already trying to handle a million different things. Um, but when we go back to the point though, if you figure it out on the sideline during the game, then that good kudos to you, you know, you, you figured it out, but uh, not stealing it while, I mean, it's almost like when people complain that Urban was out recruiting as he got the head coaching job at Ohio State, but he wasn't coaching in the bowl game. Um, it's 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 people complaining, well, he had an unfair advantage because he didn't have to do any of that. Well, that has actually been done even by Brady Hoke and other people. That's been done for years. But this, guys, I, I don't even know how to explain it. it he's, when you're hiring people and sending people to film si- purely just sidelines, uh, at your opponent's games and including possible future points. Also, and, and again, Valenti, I was listening to Valenti and he even said, I don't understand how they knew exactly how to play Ohio state hundred percent in the second half. They, it's almost like they knew everything Ohio state was going to do. They had the perfect defense called, but TCU just threw them for a loop. <laughs> you know, it just, it didn't make any sense. Whatever you think of Ryan day. Now I know Jay, you like him, but I'm talking about you. I like him, but Buckeye nation up and down with him. Whatever you think right now, he is a brilliant, offensive mind there's no way you just stifle him all the time <laughs> you know so Corey, one thing i've learned about ryan day is that the times when i've been very critical of him i've learned this year that maybe my criticism has not been um coming at the proper time 
he's not happy with how things are going right now. No, and I can only more imagine fiery than ever, honestly. I can only imagine how upset he was in 2021. Um, uh, not so much the start of the season, the Minnesota game, the Oregon loss. Uh, I think it was a Toledo game, maybe Akron that year as well. Forget exactly who the Buckeyes played the first four games of that season. He's frustrated now. He must have been going mad at Minnesota week one that year when Ohio State almost lost. Literally, if Minnesota's running back, Mo Ibrahim, if he does not tear, I think it towards ACL that game, Minnesota probably wins that. And there's a good chance Ohio State goes 0-2 at the beginning of Stroud's career as he QB one at Ohio state. I have a mad respect for Ryan day. Now he's adjusting. He is learning that winning with defense is okay. Yes. You have to outscore the opponent, but your defense is consistently winning games. It did it, did it against Notre Dame, did it against uh, Penn state as well. And uh, somebody said Ryan day is do- maybe been Josh Pate. Don't know exactly for mm-hmm. sure, but Ryan day is doing what Lincoln Riley can't. That's Josh Pate. Yep. And there were a lot of people in the offseason, CBS Sports, Sporting News, they have their coach rankings. A lot of people had Lincoln Riley above Ryan Day. I've and never James agreed Franklin with that. For that matter. I have never agreed with that. I think Ryan Day is a good coach. Now, yes, I understand there may be a hot seat conversation that we have at the end of the season if the Buckeyes lose to the Wolverines because that game has not been played. However, however, Ryan Day is a coach. And for people out there that might say, hey, Ryan Day has to go if he – Lee, if he loses to Michigan again, who's better? Who are you going to get that's a better coach than Ryan Day for this team? Yeah, you want a cheater to coach for this team? Yeah, go right ahead. Well, according to Wolverine fans, we've been cheating for years anyway. So um, (laughs) every message board they have is every message board they have is they you know they cheat. They always put a money symbol. Oh, it's like, well, even if we were paying recruits, it's legal now. So (laughs) whatever, right? Right. Um, and I don't know. It, it, again, it, it's, it's like it's always an excuse. And now, now they're now they're in the bargaining state about the excuse. I mean, I will admit I've seen some Michigan fans kind of like, if this is true, I'm disgusted by the program. Which I will applaud those people. Like you have some morals As you of some decency. Yeah, As you yeah should. exactly. So, Jay, man, tell them where they can find you, brother. We've gone long, but it's been worth it. Oh man, Corey, it's fun to be back on this show in the non-host role of a podcast being behind the mic. Uh, you can follow me on X, formerly known as Twitter, at jsteven07. Check out Locked on Buckeyes every Monday through Friday covering your Ohio State football and basketball teams. Basketball season starts here quickly, and I'm uh, not ready for that whole fiasco. Um, nightmare, Corey, not ready for the basketball season. Um, check out the Jay Stevens podcast as well. The Locked on Buckeyes podcast on YouTube or Apple or Spotify, or wherever you get your podcast, Jay Stevens Podcast. It's audio only for now. Um, Apple, Spotify, wherever you get podcasts, you can get that one as well. Jay, we appreciate you, man. Uh, it's been a lot of fun, obviously. And uh, again, this is, I'm just going to say it. You can agree with me or disagree with me. This is kind of delicious as a Buckeye fan. <laughs> oh, dude. Oh, dude. I have been waiting. I don't. Man, I'm 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 I got this little I got a meme or some little graphic somebody put up there. Um, Jim Harbaugh, it's a Wheaties box, but it says Cheaties, and yeah, I I might end up posting that, dude. It's it's just so nice. It's so nice. I the one moment this year that I did not think the the Buckeyes could actually have a legitimate shot to get under the skin of Michigan fans. It's happening now. Before they play Penn State, mm. Penn State's defense is real. As like They're Michigan's good. Michigan has had some good play this year. They've played really nobody. They're, Michigan's defense is really good too. This might be what James Franklin needs to say. Hey, if if our running game is working, stick with the Drew Aller. Forget throwing the ball. If our throwing game is working, hey Singleton, Allen, you're not getting the ball today. It's going to be in Aller's hands all day. That might be what he needs to really take it to the Wolverines that day. I'm looking forward to that game. Because, man, that's going to be a dog fight. People think that uh, Ohio State Penn State was a dog fight. James Franklin does not sound happy or pleased with what's going on in Ann Arbor. I can't wait for that game. Absolutely. But that's the first game that Michigan will actually play a varsity team. <laughs> and so, oh, yeah. It's been JV uh, for what, nine games so far? Eight? Uh, week 11, they finally played somebody. <laughs> it's like, jeez. Easiest schedule for a P5 team I've ever yeah. seen in my life. <laughs> uh, so. 
We appreciate you, Jay. Uh, we'll, we'll be up here soon, guys. Uh, as always, goodbye. God bless. And, uh, of course, Jay, send us off. Go Bucks. Everybody gets it right. I love you guys. <laughs> Ha, <laughs> ha,